Hi guys, I'm Mary Beth Temple, and I want to take you through making your own hanging loop towels to hang in your kitchen. These are really great to make. They're really fast, they're really inexpensive, and they're a fun way to update the look of your kitchen without spending a whole lot of time or money. Let's get started. So let's get to the fun part and make some of these hanging towels. There's all kinds of variations you can do, but we're going to start with the pattern. When you click on the PDF and print it out, it's going to come off in two pages. What I want you to do is cut the two pieces out and leave a little extra at the bottom of the hanging loop piece and then tape them together. And all I did was line up the bottom of the hanging loop ink with the top of the bottom half ink so that I have the exact size that I want and tape it together. Now, I want you to use this pattern and cut out a piece of batting. It almost doesn't matter what batting you used. I used a very lightweight cotton batting. It's not there for a practical reason. These, it doesn't need to be heat resistant. It's more that it makes the top of the hanging towel sit nicely when it has a little batting in there. You could also use flannel fabric or, or whatever else you have in, laying around, but a lightweight piece of batting. Then I'm going to cut out two versions of the pattern in my fabric. Now I just have a fat quarter here. What I'd like you to do is pick a fabric pattern that doesn't have a strong direction because what I want to do is cut one in this direction and then cut the other in the other direction. Now I could put them side by side if I had something with a long strong repeat but I'd like to get as much use out of the fabric as I can. So I want to be able to cut in this direction or this direction, and I want them to be able to sort of overlap. So go ahead and cut out two pieces out of your fashion fabric. And then the last thing I'm going to do is take any old towel that you have laying around, or I got this one at the dollar store, fold it in half, and cut along the fold. You're only going to use half the towel for whichever towel you're going to do. So now, I have my half a towel and I have my piece of batting and my two pieces of fabric and I'm going to pin them together with the batting on the bottom and then the two pieces of fabric right side facing right side. So the batting on the bottom, the two pieces of fabric facing each other all pinned into one and now I'm going to sew them up. I have my fabric sandwich. So I'm going to sew along three sides. I'm going to leave the bottom straight edge open because I'm going to insert the towel in there later. So I'm going to sew around the other sections of the piece with a half inch seam allowance is allowed on your pattern. Before I turn it right side out, I want to clip the corners. So I'm going to cut right across the corners to make sure that when I turn it inside out that that's neat. I'm not worried about the bottom corners, I'll deal with those later. And then I'm going to look at the curved section of the stitching and make some short diagonal cuts so that when I turn it right side out, it hangs neatly and it's not bulky at the curves. So all I need to do now is reach in between where the two right sides of the fabric are facing. So I'm going to turn it inside out and then I'm going to press it flat and while I'm pressing I'm going to turn up a half inch seam allowance along the bottom. So when I come back it will be all pressed flat and I'll have an opening in which to insert the towel. So I pressed down my little sandwich, my little sandwich of fabric and I turned up a half inch seam allowance on the bottom. So it's all pressed in the shape it's going to finish. Now all I need to do is get my towel into the opening. Now on this one I did sort of an inverted box pleat and on this one because it had a photo instead of a, a, a geometric pattern I did some gathers. So you can do either thing that you want. You can do gathers or you can do pleats. So I'm going to just pleat this down until it will fit in the opening. It'll be about six inches and I'm going to insert it in there. Now I want at least a half inch of towel inserted into the opening because these get a lot of use and they go in the washing machine frequently so I want to make sure that they are sturdy and not fragile. So I made up some pleats and I have put them in here 
and I'm going to pin that down and then come back and do some top stitching. So now I have my towel inserted. Like I said, I want to make sure it's up there real good because I want to make sure it's sturdy. For that same reason, I'm going to put two rows of stop, top stitching across the bottom. So I'm going to stitch across the top, all the way around the piece, and then one more row across the top of the towel for sturdiness. Top stitch about an eighth of an inch in from the fold. Now all of my sewing is finished. You can see that I have two lines of top stitching across the top of the towel, which is the bottom of the hanging loop. And once again, that's just for sturdiness. They can be however far apart you want them to be. It's just decorative. Now the last thing I have to do is make it so that I can close my hanging loop over the front of the iron or the top of the fridge or whatever kind of hook I want to do it. Now I like to have a button up here for decoration or it could be practical. Now, I know a lot of you hate making buttonholes. So on this one, what I did was an actual practical buttonhole, and then I just sewed the button where I wanted it to be. But for those of you who can't bring yourself to do a buttonhole, it's totally fine to sew the button on for decoration, and then put a big giant snap under it. So in this case, I used a shank button as opposed to a sew through button so that it looks pretty. I put the button on first, and then sewed the snap on underneath. So now you have your finished hanging towel. Once again, I am Mary Beth Temple. Thank you so much for joining us here. You have learned how to make this cute little hanging towel with either a practical button closure or a snap and button decoration. And also remember, you can make gathers or you can make pleats. I hope you have a great time making a bunch of these for your kitchen.